up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the CR Droid ROM version 7.4 this is the latest build as of right now and you can see this is the 24th March 2021 build this comes with two separate versions one includes the gapps and one doesn't so here I have of course flash the gapps included version which is about 1.3 GB and if you don't know how to flash a custom ROM based on Android 11 on the Redmi K20 Pro coming from me, why you can watch that particular video to have the complete flashing guide experience. Also, some things to mention here that this ROM is based on MIUI vendor, not OSS vendor, and it has perf kernel by default. Let me show you the about section quickly. This is how it looks like. We have the CR Droid logo up top and the Android version is Android 11, of course, as you are noticing. And we have the CR Droid version over here. That's written 7.4 here. And the security patch again is March 5th, 2021, so latest. And we have the baseband version. Then the stock kernel again is the Perf G kernel. The build date is mentioned again, that is the 23rd March, 2021. If you jump into the system panel and here inside updater, we have a system update. As you can see, it shows over here. You can check for updates, but it shows about 831 MB. So I think that is the vanilla build, I think. So yeah, that's how it is. And I have flashed the GF's included version, but it shows this particular version over here, which I'm not gonna just download. Let me go back and we have the gestures option. And here you do not get much gestures like the navigation gesture and stuff. Those are in the customization section. I'll show that to you later on. Inside power menu, we have the sensitive content and the advanced reboot. By the way, let me quickly show you the power menu. This is how it looks like, of course. And we do have the like advanced reboot over here. So you can directly reboot to recover your fast boot from here. But sometimes it doesn't show the Google Smart Home controls, but right now, as you can see, it is coming up. So yeah, the Google Smart Home works, but sometimes it doesn't just appear. And we have the prevent ringing. Then we have the quickly open camera option and we have the pop-up camera settings. And from here, you do have the option for the motor calibration. So that is a good thing that this ROM comes with default camera calibration options. And we have the pop-up camera sound effects. We also get the Star Wars, Super Mario and all other options for the sound effect for the pop-up camera. And we have the camera LED disabling option. Let me go back. We also have the Gboard as the default keyboard over here, of course. And of course, you will find the customization settings, which I'll show you later on. But let me talk about this bug. This fingerprint scanner bug is still there, like it shows up sometimes. But to fix that, you just have to go home then open the earlier app or like any app over here, then it will go away. If you have like the app locks and stuff, I think it comes up, but even without that, it may come up. So yeah, here I have installed Magisk also, or I have flashed Magisk also. So with that, I have installed the ANX camera that is working fine. But let me tell you, ANX camera is not present by default here. So if you want ANX camera, you have to flash magic. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out the card right there. You can also like get the safety net working with that video. Now, why I installed ANX camera? That is because we have this kind of stock camera over here. This is a very basic kind of camera. As you can see, pretty much looks like a Snapdragon camera. So yeah, you can also switch the front camera and stuff with this. Let me show you as you can see. So yeah, that works, but this is a pretty basic camera, I feel. So that's the reason why I have flashed the ANX camera that is working fine. Also other Google cameras should be working fine too. No issues with that if you install them. Right now, let me show you the stock launcher. This is the CR Droid home launcher. It says over here. And if you go into the settings, this is how it looks like. Inside MISC, we have the hidden and protected apps and the developer options. This hidden and protected apps only hides or locks a particular app in the app drawer itself. And here we have the app drawer option and we have the show icon levels, then the background opacity. Then inside home screen, we have all these options like allow edit and double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. Those are working super fine. And we have some show icon levels on desktop and stuff. And we have show Google app, etc. And use an alternative style for the minimalistic style stuff. Those things are there. Show a random message is there that is really cool. I'll show that to you. And we have the notification dots and stuff. Icon packs you can change from here if you add or if you have installed any other icon packs. Also, you can change the icon size and the font size in the launcher. And the widgets and stuff are also working over here as you are noticing. And here it shows some cool like text over here from time to time. It shows right now, welcome to see a droid, best from ever. So yeah, it changes from time to time, I would say. And to the left of the home screen, we do have the Google's Discover page. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer, but there is the suggestions panel, which I think you cannot disable, but you can search for any particular app from here. So that is good. 
and the like smoothness of this launcher is great i did not have any issues with the uh, like launcher over here it did not force close or something so yeah the stock launcher is very smooth no issues whatsoever right now let me show you the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen yes that is there and talking about the fingerprint scanner speed as you are noticing it unlocks fine from the always on display even with my left hand thumb as you are noticing but there is a little bit of brightness problem i feel like whenever you are tapping the fingerprint scanner and whenever it unlocks i have seen some brightness kind of issues over here like it goes down then it goes up so yeah that's how it is but yes it works fine the thing which cannot is like working super fine no issues with that now talking about the quick settings panel this is how it looks like and i did customize it to the dual tone kind of thing which i'll show you later on but let me show you you can edit and add multiple toggles over here and there is the cpu info fps info and stuff that you can add and also we have some more options like app kind of quick toggles and here we have the android 11 screen recorder too with that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time and dc dimming is also there then there is a reboot toggle too so you can directly reboot to recover it just from here you don't have to actually tap the power button or something and heads up you can disable from here also there is a volume panel and this is how the default volume panel looks like as you can see you can expand it so yeah media notification alarm etc volume you can control over here so pretty good amount of like quick toggles over here and in the settings this is how it looks like we have the battery settings so first let me show you the battery settings this is how it looks this animation in the battery kind of department looks cool and we have the reset battery option over here and then thermal profiles and stuff it is there and you can change it per app over here and i did change the benchmark kind of apps over here to the benchmark preset let me go back we have the battery manager and then we have the battery saver and performance and extreme battery saver is there then if you scroll down we have the full charge lasts about how long and the screen on time and the battery temperature that's it and 18 watt fast charging is also working fine but talking about the battery life i did get really amazing battery life over here you can see the screenshots from here i got about five to six hours of screen on time not a problem like it's not too great but yeah it's good enough in the display settings we have the dark theme and if you enable the dark theme as you can see you can change the dark mode to deep gray charcoal black or amulet black as you would like it and the night light and adaptive or auto brightness is there and you can like schedule it in the live display we have the color calibration for the rgb control and inside styles and wallpapers these are the stock wallpapers that you get looks very beautiful and here i would say you do not get the live wallpapers but yeah you can apply them like by downloading them separately i guess and inside styles and wallpapers you have the font customization and stuff all those things in the grid settings we have these much grid options like up to six by six and in the clock settings we have these many aod clocks we have this tux one and the id one too so if you want to use them you can inside screen timeout we have up to 30 minutes screen timeout inside rotation settings we have up to 180 degree 270 degree etc rotation and color set to boosted by default font size display size etc are there and the dpi customization is also there we have the full screen apps you can enable like any app to go full screen and we have the lock screen kind of thing and here if you scroll down we have the always show time and info that is the always on display lock screen pulse is there show lockdown option and stuff etc is there then there is the double tap to wake wake up on plug and the enable blurs option and then there is the anti flicker or the dc dimming mode inside sound we have the dirac sound so this is where from you control the me audio dirac and we have these many audio presets and as you can see plethora of audio presets are there the sound quality for the headphone jack and bluetooth as well over here is great and we have some sound presets too and we have the hi-fi audio dirac too and you can also disable the dial pad tone screen locking sound touch sound touch vibration etc and we have the ringtone etc customization of course vibrate for calls you can customize and then we have the link ring and notification volume etc let me scroll down inside security we have the app lock so let me show you how it works so from here in this app lock we have all these options and you can lock particular apps and once you lock them you can also disable their notifications in the recent or in the notification panel so that is great and you can lock particular apps and as you can see there is only authenticate once option so that is there too if you want to use that but the app lock is working fine but then again the fingerprint scanner bug is still there like once i unlock that's fine but like right now as you can see if i open it again the fingerprint scanner just appears over here but you can still access the app of course and here as you can see if i go home and open it again the icon over here goes away so this bug was there in the latest evolution x2 and yeah that's how it is right now i think currently let me set up the face unlock and let me show you how the face unlock works 
So just completed the setup of the face unlock. Right now, let me try it. I'll just double tap over here. So it brings the front camera up and as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try it again. As you can see, this is how the face unlock works. The face unlocking speed is super fine, no issues whatsoever. Right now, it's time to show you guys the customizations of this ROM. Inside status bar settings, we have the status bar icons, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. options over here, and we have the clock style and then right, center, left, etc. You can change. Then we have the clock and date particularly. From here, you can hide the clock or enable like seconds and AM PM style. Then the date style and the date like position and stuff, everything you can customize. We also have the network traffic monitor too, but I have been using a separate app for that. And here we have the old style icon for the signals and the data disabled indicator is there. 4G icon is there and roaming indicator, Bluetooth battery status. Also there are the Vaulty icons. You can scroll through the seek bar. You can like customize the Vaulty icon. The Vaulty icon I'm using over here, which is this one looks very cool. This is the number three, I guess. And here, as you can see, there are also the view Wi-Fi icon. So if you have view Wi-Fi enabled, you can use that. And also we have the view Wi-Fi override option. Then we have the battery style. You can change it to icon portrait, circle, dot circle, solid, etc. But there is no big dotted circle or something. And we have the battery percentage enabling option. Then battery percentage when charging is there. Then the battery bar is there. Double tap to sleep and the brightness control is also there. So you can adjust the brightness just by sliding a finger on the status bar as you are noticing. So yeah, this works flawlessly. No issues so far. And we also have the quick pull down and the smart pull down here. And column and row number you can customize if you don't like this like two kind of row over here, I guess. And we have the tile title, disabling option, vibrate on toggle touch. Tint quick setting toggles are there. Then the data usage and stuff you can enable even in the quick settings, battery estimates, etc. Lot of customizations as you are noticing. And then there is the lock screen customization. We have the status bar and lock icon over here. We have the weather customization for the lock screen. Charging animation, you can change it to flash, battery drop, etc. And we have the battery info and inside FOD icon picker, we have these many fingerprint scanner icons. As you can see, plethora of icons are there. You can use these ones too if you want to. So these two are new over here that I have been noticing for the fingerprint scanner icon. Screen of fingerprint is also there if you want to use that. Also, there are the fingerprint scanner animation and as you can see, there are a plethora of animations including the scanning of Cyberpunk 2077 and there is the quantum strings, etc. You can use them if you want to. Let me scroll down. We have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen then the fingerprint authentication, vibration and stuff and power menu is there, secure power menu is there and we have the quick settings, etc. But let me tell you, there is no option to always unlock with the fingerprint scanner here. So that is a disappointment for me at least. I would have loved to see the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner here. Inside navigation, things get a little interesting because this is where you get the navigation gestures, not in the system. So inside system navigation gestures, you do not find that options over here too. This is kind of hidden inside the stock nav bar settings. So if you go into the stock nav bar settings from here, you have to go into the system navigation. Then we will find the full screen gesture options. And if you go into the settings, you have the gesture bar length customization, back gesture animation enabling option or disabling option. Then we have the left edge, right edge, etc. And the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. But there is an option to change the thickness of the pill bar. And two or three button navigation is also there over here. And pixel animation is there. Then you can invert the layout and stuff if you're using the two and three button navigation. Inside power menu, we do have the advanced restart and stuff. Long press power button toggle torch is there. End call option is there through the power button. Click to take partial screenshot and stuff, then wake device, answer call and stuff. Reorient options are there. Inside user interface, we have the ambient display option again. And here we have the preferred switch style. These are the toggles in the settings. You can change the styles of them. And we have the nav bar style too. You can change them. And we have the quick setting tile styles. This is what I have been using, the dual tone circle. And we have the settings dashboard icon kind of customization and the weather services. Inside notification, we have the in-call vibrations and the noisy notification and the heads up, then the battery light, notification light, etc. You can customize. We have the pulse settings, then the charging sound, etc. Screenshot sound, volume steps and stuff you can customize. And inside volume panel, if you go here, we have the volume panel timeout. So you can change how, for how long the volume panel stays over here until and unless you touch like anywhere else. So yeah, that is great. Volume panel on the left also was there and adaptive playback is there. In the MISC settings, we have the swipe with screenshot and this works fine. But let me tell you, there is no scrolling option for the screenshot. Pocket detection is there. We have the toast icon, sensor block per package and stuff. Then we have the about section of the CR Droid ROM. You can donate to the developers from here. So that was it about the CR Droid customizations. 
but let me tell you some other things about this ROM. You can bring Google Assistant anywhere here by just sliding from these corners. But let me tell you the OK Google voice detection does not simply work like Hey Google does not bring you the Google Assistant. So that is a bummer for the Google Assistant like voice trigger users. But you can definitely bring the Google Assistant from sliding with the corners and that works fine. Talking about the DRM Info, yes, my DRM Info shows L3. That's because I have broken it earlier. But if you have not broken your DRM certification, it should be showing L1 for you. Also, the safety net passes right out of the box here, so you should not worry. But here I have also installed Magisk and even then I have safety net working. SBI card and Google Pay etc. apps are working fine here without any issues. If you do not know how to get them working even after you have Magisk installed, watch that ANX camera flashing guide video. I have shown everything in that particular video. Now, talking about performance of this ROM, the performance in terms of daily driving has been really great for me. I have had no issues so far even while gaming and stuff. But I would say the Antutu benchmark is quite a little buffed with the latest Antutu version. But yeah, it is about 5 lakhs it's showing. So yeah, with the latest Antutu benchmark app, that is a little higher than usual. And we have the Geekbench score here, you can see. So the performance over here of this ROM has been great, no issue so far. And this is how the recent panel looks like over here. We have the screenshot taking option, then we have the share option and you can clear one app at a time and then clear all the apps with this button. And of course we can go into the split screen mode or pin a particular app over here with that like icon over here from the recent panel. And it is a horizontal recent panel of course, works fine. Yes, I have been liking the CR Droid ROM pretty much while using this for a couple of days now. And I would say this is a pretty great ROM and in terms of daily driving performance, this ROM is great. The battery life is not that great, but yeah, it's fine enough for daily driving. If you don't game a lot, it should be fine. And also talking about the fingerprint scanner and stuff, that bug is there, like the fingerprint icon appears sometimes. You just have to open app, then go home, then open the app again. That fixes the problem for that moment. But yeah, that bug is still there. And also I do miss the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner here in this ROM. I am not gonna lie. So that was my review about the CR Droid ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing out for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.